this boat for around 20 years and I bought her because I was looking for a good stable solid and simple dinghy that I could use for camping aboard and for coastal cruising. The design was very much created here in Duanane in that it is part of a series of boat designs that were published in the magazine Le Chasse Marais was very interested in the patrimoine, in the tradition of boats of the French coastline. Boats rather like these you can see behind me. So Le Chasse Marais was about reviving that tradition, about celebrating that tradition, this lost tradition. And so they produced sets of plans that people could buy and then build boats at home and their plans were of simple small open boats like this which is called an Elure designed by Francois Vivier and part of a movement called Voile Aviron Sail and Or which Le Chasse Marais promoted. This is Avel Dro, my dinghy, on a cold winter's day in Duanane. Just a simple little boat, unpretentious, straightforward, and used for coastal cruising and sleeping on board. I moored up close alongside Tellen Moor, the replica of the local fishing chaloup and they were putting tar in the villages. So the lovely smell of hot pitch wafted across my mooring place as I put up the boat tent. There are many ways of rigging a boat tent on a cruising dinghy and mine is one of the most traditional it's cotton canvas, it's thrown over the yard because my boat doesn't have a boom and it's then unrolled and fastened down all round to hooks on the outside of the hull. So the idea is to show you round the boat. As you can see, it's a little camping dinghy. And I feel that a boat like this would suit a great many people who end up buying something much larger and more complicated and I think they do that because they feel that a larger boat is is safer and more enjoyable but I'm not certain that's always the case. A boat like this is I often say rather like climbing up a mountain with a lightweight tent in your backpack. It's like bivouacking like lightweight camping and I would say that normal yachting is a bit more like caravanning 
particularly nowadays when most people sail from marina to marina and come alongside a pontoon and hook their boat up to electrical power. And so when people say to me, why don't you buy a bigger boat? Wouldn't it be much more comfortable? You could have hot and cold running water and so on. I say, but yes, but that's a bit like saying to someone who, who goes up to Scorful Pike and camps near the top, why don't you try and tow a great big caravan up there with a, with a half track or something? It's obviously absurd that the two things are, are, are quite different and the sort of sailing you do in a little boat like this is much more in tune with the wilderness. It's much more about being out there in the wild environment and having a, a direct experience of nature. Whereas in a yacht is, yes, much more like taking civilization with you. And it depends what you want, of course. But sailing a little boat like this is a huge change from my ordinary life. I have a house, I have hot and cold running water. If I, if I want that, I have it at home. I don't need to have that when I go for a weekend away. And in a little boat like this, the simplicity and the directness of the experience is very, very pointed and uh, extremely powerful. And I think more and more, it is the sort of experience that people are looking for. And what I would hope to do in my talks and my videos is to give people the confidence to go sailing in this way, to treat a small open boat not just as something that you, you go out for a day and you have a sort of quick sail about or even a race, but something that you can use to have serious cruises over a number of days. If you compare the sort of camping I do aboard this boat with going up a mountain in a lightweight tent and backpacking, this is much more salubrious. I have serious um, ability to cook things. I can take lots of food. I have a big battery so I can recharge my iPhone and things like that. I can surf the internet. I can do all sorts of things. It really is actually extremely comfortable once you're all set up for camping. Equally well, yes, if you're, if you're in an exposed anchorage and the boat is pitching around, it can feel <laughs> really quite challenging. It can maybe from time to time be uncomfortable, but I'm not certain that seeking comfort the whole time is necessarily a route to a to a life that's full of memories and full of laying down uh, experiences that, that you remember for the rest of your life. It's a bit like avoiding challenge. This is the Passage de Get at the mouth of the harbour here in Douarnenez that leads out into the wide bay of Duarnenay. Dinghy cruising can be as ambitious or as cautious as you wish, but the main thing is to set sail and into the environment where you are on your own, and you are relying on yourself for security, you're relying on your boat and her equipment, you're relying on your skill and your knowledge of the waters that you're sailing in and of the techniques for sailing in them. That is key. On the other side of the bay is Morgat and I can go in there, put up the tent and spend the night in the shelter of the harbour there, just as if I was a yacht. But the difference is that I can haul my boat out of the water at any time 
and go just along the coast and relaunch her and sail in lots of different waters and that's what really makes the difference between yachting and dinghy cruising the ease of being able to trail your boat to new waters. Just a few miles to the north of here is the Rad de Brest, a little bit too far away to go just for the weekend, except of course if I trail my boat there. Here there is the choice of remote anchorages where you can spend the night in your boat alone with the wildlife of the foreshore and the seabirds far away from anywhere anyone would ever take a large yacht. And there are also little creeks leading to little villages where you can dry out close to a bar or restaurant. You know, very French thing I'm filming. This is what we ate. <laughs> it was amazing. Where I live is on the western edge of the European continent. Out beyond is nothing before you reach America other than the odd romantic offshore island. But it is in intricate inshore waters that cruising dinghies are perhaps at their best and navigating between little islands and amongst the shoals. This is the Gulf de Morbihan where every two years there is a huge boat festival where flotillas of little cruising dinghies sail along together. I started this film in Douarnenez and so I've talked about the waters round here, around Brittany. But a place I often sail is the Bristol Channel, a remarkable piece of sailing water. One of the most remarkable places in it is Clavelli that seems designed for a cruising dinghy. There is no marina here, no pontoons, no real facilities for visiting boats at all. You dry out on the beach, attached to the ground chains. So what do you do in the evening in Clavelli? You walk up the old cobbled village street and then you go to the inn. <laughs> For somewhere that's just on the North Devon coast, Clavelli seems amazingly exotic and special. But normal sailing waters can be just the same. The Dinghy Cruising Association runs lots of rallies in the Solent. This is Oxy Lake, very near to Lymington. And here some cruising dinghies have pulled up on the beach and then they will be setting up their boat tents for the night. Many of these are just very simple creations made from pieces of tarpaulin. Nothing special, nothing complicated. So that is dinghy cruising. You can do it in groups or you can do it alone. You can be as ambitious as you like or do it very simply and stay close to home. It is about simplicity. It is about being in the natural world. It is about self-reliance. It is about rediscovering yourself. <laughs>